one of the most expensive, large collections of koi no one has seen before. We are about to feed the koi from three stories up. What's up everybody? Today, you guys are about to see one of the best private collections of koi in Germany. My friend Matthew from Koi Service Europe brought us out to show us one of his friend's ponds. We're gonna meet the owner, Alex Essel. The best collections probably in Europe for koi. In all of Europe? Oh my gosh. All right, let's go check out the yeah. koi garden. Welcome. Hello, nice to meet you. Come in. Wow, some big boys. These are units. Oh my goodness. I can see why it's one of the best now. Wow. All right, so do you see all these koi right here? This is a massive open concept garden. I have never seen this many koi all together so big in my entire life. How many fish are in this pond total? 60, 65. How big is this pond? How many liters? Um, 60,000 liters. 60,000 liters. Yes. And how old is it? Now 15 years. 15 years. So this is an old, pretty old pond. At first time we had a garden pond huh? with goldfishes. First koi comes and it was a virus, the koi virus. Every year, every month, one koi more. One koi more. <laughs> This pond is deep. This is a really deep pond. Two meters. So two meters deep is like uh, six feet. Which of these fish stands out to you, Matthew, is the best? Can you tell? Well, I, I personally have a favorite in here, but I wouldn't say it's the best. To me, especially, always this Tantio Showa comes up when I look at it. Every time I'm visiting Alex uh, and we have a beer, I always look at this fish. But Alex might be able to tell you which is its best fish. Which is your favorite fish? I have no favorite fish. When I had a favorite fish, next week died. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Also, the, the favorite fish died. <laughs> yeah. So no more favorite <laughs> yeah, fish. Yeah, no. Makes sense, dude. They're massive. This has got to be the largest, not only the largest, but the biggest and fattest collection of koi I've ever seen, all together in one spot. I mean, the only other place that I've seen this many massive koi fish at once is in Japan. Probably at Marihiro, in his big circle. What are you feeding these? How often do you feed them? Five times a day. Five times a day. But this is the biggest pond here. Yes. And so this is where all the biggest fish go. Yes. Gotcha, so there's gonna be more fish and you have a collection of fish that you're still grooming. Mm -hmm. Got it. Can you swim with these fish? My children um, swim with the fish, yes. Yanni, you can swim with them, but if you break it, you buy it. So. You can go take a shower and then jump in. You can sit like a mermaid in this water, water feature, just inside like this. When you say 60 fish, are there 60 fish just in this one pond? Yes. There's that many? But how many fish total do you think you own? Like if you count the fish in the cellar? In the cellar, also 60. And you have some bonsais. You actually have, it's a whole bonsai garden now that I'm noticing. It is a full Japanese garden. Are they hard to maintain, the bonsais? Or do they yes. just, they're self? It's more difficult than split up fish. Yes. Really? It's more difficult to take care of the bonsai trees than it is the fish. Wow. Alex has got a specialist coming every now yeah. and then and he will take care especially just for the trees. Wow. This one, 100 years. 100 years? The smaller ones, I would say, have more value. Yeah. Really? The big, crazy ones. The smaller bonsais have <laughs> more value. the most value. expensive one. Yeah, this one. This one right here. So, uh, how much is this one? Enough. <laughs> yeah. All right, I won't touch it. <laughs> yes. I'm seeing pretty much every breed that I know, but just as a massive unit. They're like whales. It's this awesome. black one, Japanese koi show, first place. Really? Yes. Winner of the show, first place. And you got it here, and then it turned completely down. Oh my goodness. So when you got it in Japan, it was all red. So the value dropped. That's the gamble. That is the gamble. You see this white fish here? It almost looks like it's got like a red cut on its head. That used to be a full tancho and it just went away. So I guess I didn't realize that it could undevelop that poorly for no reason. That happens? It can happen. Yanni, what do you think of the, of the pond? Yeah, these are the biggest koi I've ever seen, and there's 60 of them, so. This one right here? Yellow, is that the biggest one? I think so. That's yeah. a Yamabuki? Not the longest one, but uh, yeah. the most massive one. Yeah. The most massive one. Yep. Massive one. Yeah. Wow. Like Alex. German beer. Alex is prettier than these. How about that one? This one looks like uh, Rudolph. Oh, this guy? Red dot is like on its nose. 
I'm assuming you've been to Japan to pick out some koi? 19 times. 19 times you've been to Japan. Wow. Normally two times a year. What are the top fish in here? Some of the best. Like this one is a top koi because it's very young and very big. Karashi. Karashi. And also uh, this shova. The shova. Only uh, three years old. It's only three years yes. old. It's like the leaderboard is always kind of changing in this pond. It's good fish. It's a tancho shoa. Tancho shoa. Yeah. All right, so now we are heading downstairs to Alex's cellar. This is where he keeps all his smaller koi that he's basically grooming uh, until they're big enough to go upstairs into that bigger pond. There's some new ones from Japan. Wow, so this is, we call it the cellar. Yes. So this is like the basement or our, the garage that has a lot of the younger koi. Better quality koi. Really? Why do you keep the better quality ones down here? Because you will grow them here much bigger and quicker than in the pond. They grow faster in these smaller controlled pond environments than they do in the big pond? It's much easier to control the environment than in the bigger pond. You get more food into the fish. How many times a day do you feed them in here? Also five times a day. So the same amount of times, it's just because it's more controlled. Yeah. So if you're a koi, this is the good spot to live as a koi. There's got a lot of koi in here. The filters. Oh my god. Oh, that's really cool. Look at all these guys. These are some of awards? Japanese prizes and European prizes. So after building the big pond, then he built these smaller ponds to basically accommodate more koi, to get more younger koi, keep farming them and grooming them. After that, the obsession just kind of kept going and it took over the rest of the garage. built all of this yourself? Yes, or? yes. It's crazy. So this whole thing used to just be like a garage and you decided, hey, I'm gonna come. No place for a car. It is no place for a car, yeah. These drums, oh, look at that. That's a big spoon. Are all just what, full of food? Wow. That is a lot of koi food, Alex. How much koi food do you go through a day? Three kilograms, not more. Three kilos of food a day. Imagine you have to eat the steak in uh, three kilos. That'd be a big steak. So if you don't like how the fish looks, you just use it for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a big dog. Oh my gosh. I thought he was gonna tear my head off. Do you just, are all your animals massive? Yeah, more than 50 kilos. He's the protector of the koi. Yes. You're a good boy. Should we get wet? <laughs> Let's get it go. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we just barely missed that shot right in between us. Out there, which yeah. sounds like halt, which means stop, but then there's a koi out there. So that means uh, beware. Uh, this is a koi, a, koi, a koi holder, yeah. It's a koi crazy guy. And symptoms of um, craziness are fully normal. In Japanese, koi kichi. Yeah, it's like koi kichi. That's the word for koi crazy. I think we're all a little koi kichi on this channel. What are those briefcases over there? to make it look tidy, like a storage. storage. I don't know, briefcases, two random white bands just pulled up. <laughs> I think we better get out of here. <laughs> I think we gotta play a little deal or no deal with some koi. There's more? Oh, very nice. So you are truly a fish guy. Yes. Do you take care of this tank? Yes. Or is it serviced and maintenance by yes. someone else? I take care of this. You take care of it? Yes. Wow, that's really impressive. They're very different hobbies, but they have a lot of things in common. The whole idea of being able to collect rare different kinds of koi, corals. We got the real moss wall, which is really cool. I love these. So this is where you guys do business meetings or is this just yes. like break room? It's for business meetings. This is how you get deals done. Alex, can you tell me a little bit, or the viewers about your background? What do you do for a living and, and what is the company? I'm an electrician. Schools, schools, hospitals. Bigger company yeah. sites. How many employees do you have? 130. And you started the company in 1996, Electro Essel. So it's been going for a long time. So your background actually helped you quite a bit with this. Being an electrician, you're able to like essentially custom program this app to be able to manually control all the stuff from an iPad. If you build a house, if you build a company, all the electric work will be done by this company. Got it. So you can have a Japanese beer. All three of these are Japanese so beers? This German, this oh, this German. is German. This is America. <laughs> Cheers. 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 All right, so now we're heading up to the roof because we're going to feed the koi, and that's the coolest place to view basically a 60 massive koi going into a feeding frenzy. 
This is your office? It's a big screen, man. Everything you have is big. Oh my god. Speaking of big. Hello. Alright, so we're on the roof now. This is where he feeds the fish every day. And we got this massive tin of food. So you feed them from up here? And this is normally how they get fed. Oh my god, look at this view. Wow, that is a great view of the koi. We are about to feed the koi from three stories up. Alright, I guess we could send the food down the hatch. Wow. So, it's dinner time. Wow. This never gets old, right? Never gets old. Yeah. You always enjoy. Yes. And they are going to swarm that. That is what a koi feeding frenzy looks like. All right. Cheers, koi. Oh, I got to work on my toss. That's a long toss. That's a heave. Wow, so every winter, Alex builds a tent around the pond. The koi stay outside, or I guess inside. It stays warm, so the it doesn't freeze or anything. Gotcha. You do heat it inside here? Got it. And the bonsais can live in this temperature? No problem. Wow. This is inside the tent. That's so cool. I need to do that. I need to build like a tent around uh, my koi pond. But it's nice for the koi, but it's also nice for you. Yeah, I can enjoy the koi in 365 days. Right, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, this little sprinkle right here is for the shy guy. They're not used to this. Sprinkle a couple extra from Uncle George. All right, the koi have had dinner. It's been a great day. You could theoretically jump in, right? A koi cannonball. Mm, he's like, no. And now a quick word. Weed him koi's merch. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Weed him koi's. Freshwater scrub and lots of other cool designs. Plus I added my classic hoodies in new colorways like pink, blue, and white. Remember to keep those nitrates low and click here for the next video in this series. George, out.